I mean, I was, I've always been sort of a frustrated architect. I, I wanted to be uh, an architect and somehow the calculus and physics got to me and uh, I ended up being a school teacher instead and I taught in Whitehall for 20 years. Um, but just before I graduated from Ohio State, um, I met some folks who lived in German Village and visited them and absolutely fell in love with the whole concept of restoration, of the, the charm, of the, the, the brick streets, the old houses. Uh, my father had always said that your first house should be a double. And so I found a double uh, on City Park, 1009, 1011 City Park, that faced Schiller Park. And it was partially done, but not completely done. And uh, uh, with some help from my dad, that was my first house. And uh, it was great because I would live in one side of it and fix up the other side and then move over there and fix up the first side. So that was the beginning. And I, so I lived there for a couple of years and then uh, bought another house and redid it and then another and I think I've done 14 or 15 houses in German Village at one time or another. I really liked German Village for the charm of it but I also really liked it because I was also just coming out and I really wasn't coming out I was still teaching school but in my own I mean I, I was being introduced to the gay community and German Village was a place that gay people could live and be fairly open and comfortable with their lives. And German Village also attracted a lot of people that would become very important to the city of Columbus, Politi in politics, in business, uh, in the professions. And so everybody got to know everybody. And then, um, and, and, and you know, it's the same old thing. You, it's hard to hate people you know that you like. And so some of the barriers began to break down. And I, I mean, I've always said, and I make no bones about it, I, I'm sure there's some that maybe wouldn't agree with me on this, but German Village wouldn't have happened without the gay community.